Okay, I'm going to call the meeting to order because it's pretty close to 6 o'clock. Maybe a little after, but it is school time, so it usually is a little slow. So the real world is probably a little after. Um, so welcome everybody. Um, I'd like to, I'm going to go off agenda for a second. Um, I just, if we could, starting on that end, just introduce yourself because we do have some people in the audience which we usually don't. Um, and we'll go through and we'll introduce the board. Sure. I'm Lisa Harris. I'm a school board member at Marlboro. Ken McFadden, uh, representing New Fane for the West River District. Dan MacArthur from the Marlboro School District. Mike Foley from the West River District. Leanne Jelson, West River from Brookline. Rick Thorpe, uh, River Valleys from Wardsboro. Al Clausen, Townsend, West River Vice Chair. And Rich Werner, I'm from um, the River Valleys representing Dover. Emily Long, West River District from Newfane. Uh, Joe Winrick, West River District from Townsend. Allison Young, Stratton. Mm -hmm. I can <laughs> Sorry. I'm sandwiched between two people. I'm okay. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for that. Um, so, is there any changes or um, changes to the agenda? Any additions, deletions from anybody? Bill, we, is there a West River meeting after this meeting? Before? Yeah, before. before it's done. Oh, it's all done. Mm -hmm. we were oh, here. cool. Okay. Well, very efficient. Wow, thank you. Um, if nobody else, I have a couple things. I'd like um, to add an executive session for contractual issues at the number six and then make number seven adjourn. And I also want to bounce um, the agency funding grant fund up to number three and we'll put public comments at number four just because Lori who just is gone now did she leave she yeah, did yes yeah, oh well then yeah. we can leave it where it is perfect thank you so public comments hi public any comments <laughs> there's somebody in the back corner hello no you're right in, like my line <laughs> <laughs> no, you're. That's okay. If, I just won't see it's if you Gerald. want to say something. Okay. I'll, I'll poke you because I can. Okay, you can see her. Okay, I so we're kind of informal. So please, if if I don't see, you, just say hey, dummy, or something. Um, if we got no public comment, I'm going to go to old business, and we have two things, and we're just going to review them quickly um, because we usually don't vote on these until April first. Right after we have our. Um, after the, the school budgets go through so that we know that we're okay to, to approve them. Um, the first one is the agency fund budget and there should be a copy of that in front of folks. Is there extra copies for guests? So the agency fund really doesn't cost anybody except the schools that use it and it's um, been something that Wyndham Central has done since way before Emily was on the board. Um, it came, I think, from, from Frank Rucker. <laughs> That's really mean. <laughs> well, no, I'm just saying. Or how about it? it came I was before, only on one year da, longer than you. Before I Dan MacArthur there. was ever on a school Dan. board. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's really old. old. But anyways, um, what it is is it's if different schools um, need like a an art teacher, and they're only going to have art one day a week, or if they have a phys ed teacher and they only need phys ed one day a week, it's a way for um, the schools to hire a person and give them a full-time job so we're not just having a person who's one day a week. Um, and then um, we, we can usually keep people better. And it goes to the central office. And what they do is the central office takes their salary and their benefits and divides it into 100. And then if you have one day a week, you've got 20% of that person. So you pay 20% of that bill. Um, it's actually something that uh, schools in Brattleboro have talked about trying to do and I was really surprised when they had never heard of it. Um, when I went and testified before the Senate education one time I told them about it. I thought they were going to cut my head off because they thought they looked at me like I had three heads and had never heard of anything like that. So I think Wyndham Central is way ahead of the curve in sharing resources um, you know, before we were mandated to. So, um, the, what happens is the administrators talk to the central office and give them an idea what, after discussions with their board, what they think they're going to need, and then they give it to the central office, and then central office puts together a budget, which you have in front of you, and 
and um, we'll vote on that April 1st. We have to vote on it um, before contracts have to be issued, so there's RIF notices don't have to go out. And But we also changed it probably the first time as chairman 10 or 12 years ago because we used to vote on it in December, and we decided to push it off and vote on it after school budget meetings so that in case somebody had some but had their budget cut um they weren't committed to the agency fund and then that way because um, the central office has issued contracts and once contracts are issued we we can't um they're issued and we have to pay the people so is there any questions on agency fund and Lori was feeling a little under <clears throat> the weather so we can throw questions at bill if you want yes Good question. I see a head shaking, yes. Uh, we usually put it up after the board approves it, but with the board's... Uh, I, I think you should put it up online. Sure. And then it should be available to all your boards, so when you vote, when you go to your meeting for your... Um, when you go to the meeting for the um, for the budget for whatever area you're from... Oh, I know you. Yeah, so when you go to the West River meeting, you can, you can ask questions about it there, and they... But it doesn't show up as individual sections. It shows up as just one um, block for whatever they're going to be doing. Yeah, come on. We won't make you introduce yourself. Right next to Alice. Yes. Okay, so. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there another one? Thank Yes, um, go ahead. I got a question. Well, hang on. You're next. Yes. Sir. Ladies Has this first. been modified since the last West River meeting? I don't believe it's been modified. It has? Yeah, we need it to. Okay. Oh. So this is different than what we saw in December? Uh, by a point one zero FTE. Okay. Where? Uh, in um, general music. Okay. But I, yes. could, I could change. Well, actually, I'm sorry. I'm going to... Canada. Now, real quick, I think, I think this needs to be clarified or changed or something because it says for professional development for the West River District that we have 49.95 FTEs. Could you explain that? Uh, probably not well right now. No. <laughs> Where, where's that? That's not in the agency That's, fund. That's right on the summary. That's yeah. Oh, on the summary. It's on the summary. For the agency fund? Yep. Top page. I will right smack in the that. middle. Rather than give you erroneous information, I will clarify it. Thank you. You bet. That is interesting. Isn't it? No wonder the budget's so high. <laughs> Yours. Well, really, I'll get the same clarified. Thank you. Yeah, that's a bargain. Can we hire everybody at that rate? <laughs> Okay, hang on a second. That's how we cut the budget. Well, hey, sorry. Just so we don't lose it. Emily was next, and if you want. No, I oh. okay. uh, All I was going to yeah. comment on was that, that this is always subject to change right up until the date. Correct? We vote. I mean, boards until can. April. Right, boards can. So, so even though we post it, it may change between now and April 1st, and I think it's just really important that everybody understands that. It never is, it's always floating until we actually vote. That's correct. And, and that's again why we we put the vote off till April so that people would have time. So, okay. Just sometimes with a bigger group, if we get off the track, I'm No, and I love jokes, so you can tell me later. Okay. So, if there's nothing else on agency fund, the next one is grants budget. And again, the grant budget is how we spread around money that comes in from both the feds and the state. And a lot of times federal money comes to the state and then the state hands it out. So, um, a lot of it's for this, our special ed. <coughs> some of it's special for the after part of the consolidated And then after school programs, we yeah. get some grant money. And again, this is kind of money in and money out. Um, you can vote not to spend the money, but then we won't get the money. So it kind of seems counterproductive, I guess. Yes? So, is this like small schools grant? And no. 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 No, those go direct to the districts. Okay. This, the, the, and again, there's copies of it, but 
It's most of it's a special ed, Title Two A, Title One, Title Four, IDEA B Basic and Pre K. The it used to be that like essential early ed and twenty mm -hmm. first century after school program. Um, so these aren't necessarily um, they're distributed based on the, the actual need. Right. Different so different schools qualify for different grants. Right. And they, they flow through the central office because the, the state of Vermont, this is what I love. The state of Vermont wanted us to combine. That was yeah. part of Act 46. But yet Lori has to report each school separately because they still want to keep track of how much money is being spent in each of the buildings. So, yeah. um, but this is, and these are, these are the, again, the grants and the superintendent. We have to, we authorize the superintendent when we reorganize to accept grants on behalf of the district. Okay. And this is available online? Uh, it um, it is. This one is actually online. Okay, I'm going to get to you a second. Go ahead. Yeah, I guess I'm just, um, wondering if there's um, any clarification about the budget that's uh, the, the the how the money's being spent down at the central office like is there anything in writing somewhere for the public to see how that's broken down the superintendent's budget yeah yes that is definitely on that's online. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and that's already been approved. That, that's already been approved. We usually right, approve that in December. But I just know that there are people that are having a hard time deciding how to vote because they don't they don't know where to find that. Okay, they, they you don't vote. Public doesn't vote on the right, the, but they do for the budget. For the school district budget. budget. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Good. And maybe this is this is addressing Lori's just not here, but. According to the adjustments we made last time, there should have been an update to the nurse FTE as well as the technology for the for the shared services. Okay, that's in the that's in the agency fund budget. And I know I'm back. Right. With the agency okay. Fund budget. We've Sorry. we've gone over that. So if you have a question, I will check on that because yeah, it's pretty. We did important. change it in the West River, and I want to make sure that it's changing. Yeah. You yeah. got. Okay, and if you ha if you guys see something else on the agency fund, you can can talk to the board or, or give Bill give Bill a note, let him know because you know the, if you look at these numbers, you know after a while your eyes get blurry and then you're not sure what you're looking at. Everybody good with grants? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I'm Gerald Julian Tisa from Ukraine. Um, so I'm just. Double checking on the line here for student transportation. Okay, so are you on the grant budget or the back yeah, to the agency fund? This is the agency fund. Okay, we have, we've gone past that already. So if you have a question for that, go ahead and just ask Bill okay. after the meeting. We're not voting on that tonight. Yeah, and you, we'll have another, you'll have another shot to discuss that before we vote on it. Okay, so on the grant budget, is there any other questions? Okay. Then I'm going to move to new business. We have a regional calendar from 2021. And I think, Bill, when do they vote on this? Um, so you see in your packet you've got the calendar, and then you'll see behind the calendar is the statute. So I have to vote amongst all the feeding superintendents into the Wyndham Regional Career Center for a regional calendar. Um, it has kind of been a non-issue for the three years that I've been because there hasn't been any dramatic changes to the uh, calendar. But this year, the proposed calendar from the Career Center includes a changing of the February holiday week from President's Week to the week after. And um, so I need advice from the board on how to vote. I'm one of five votes. So uh, the Career Center is for this. And we have four other votes that will determine what the regional calendar is. The other vacations and uh, days are um, in alignment with the past. The, the most important are matching the three days in Thanksgiving, 
the days during December holiday, the days during February holiday, and the days during April holiday. There can be flexibility with uh, <coughs> different professional development days, but those four major need to be in alignment so that the Career Center is serving all similar calendars. So this is the first time it's been different. What happened to Veterans Day? Oh, hey, 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 hey. So those are individual decisions by individual districts. Okay. So can I, you can go second after Emily. So um, this is then in, an, in alignment with what our regional career center wants to do. That is That's right. number one. Yes. Number two, we have done this before. Mm -hmm. We've gone back and forth over the years, and yes. I think it's really important <coughs> that we all recognize that we haven't always had it on the week of um, uh, President's, President's Week. We've, we've often done it to, to link it frankly, to town meeting um, break as well to lengthen the time, which this is doing. So this isn't outside of what we've done in the past. It's just different from the three years that since I have been Got superintendant, it. so I thought it was highly important for Got this, it. And, this. And, and I'll just make one, um, that was my question, making sure that we all understand that. No. I have been, over the many years, heard an awful lot of comments about which week we should do it. And frankly, the, when we've moved <laughs> it to President's Week is when I, I mean, you guys all may be different, but I hear a lot more negative around that than having it this way. So I'm, it's just a comment from anecdotally from what I've heard over the years. I don't know what anybody else feels. Ken. Well, I agree with Emily there. We used to have it there and go back right after town meeting, which worked out perfect. And I don't know why they changed it, but they did. And it goes back and forth. And, mm -hmm. and it's funny because it, it it actually most of the most of uh, schools in the area and over across the border there are all next week, and it, you know, for some of us who have families that have you know, grandchildren over on the other side, we'd like to spend some time with them too. But uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> Veterans Day. We used to have Veterans Day off years ago. All of a sudden, we don't have Veterans Day off the last so many years, and I'm just wondering why. I'll represent the veterans from the district, okay? Um, can I? Yeah. I have no uh, evidence as to why that was made, but um, those individual dates can uh, be done at the district level. So um, since you are on the West River Board, I'd be happy to put it on the agenda for the uh, February 24th for that particular day. So, so just a quick comment for people to think about, too, is you know, when we switched, we have a couple times gone against the Wyndham Regional calendar. And the problem with that is when parents realize that, you know, parents have kids at the high school and the career center and in, in our schools, they get really ugly because they, then they get no time off because, you know, they have to be around for the, for the week that we're in session and then be around for the week that the career center's in session. And the other thing is we can send Bill down with explicit instructions to vote against and do everything he can, but he's one of five or one of six? One of five. One of five. Mm -hmm. So unless he, you know, takes some backup, maybe Ken and some other veterans, we may not, he may not be able to do it for us anyways. But it seems as though, is there any other comments on that? Yes. I, I don't have the piece of paper, so are you talking yeah. about changing? I have thinking, oh, I changing it's from February vacation. February vacation. Yeah. Are you talking about it not being not next week? It would be the no. week after next yeah. year. Right. Next year. Uh, so just so we remember, we remember that that probably conflicts with kids who work at Stratton and count on that week to earn some money. Yeah. And Mount Snow, and Mount we've, Snow. we've gotten beat up for that before, yeah. too. <laughs> Any other comments? So do you folks, what do you folks wish? Do you wish Bill to, to go down with the ship, or do you wish him to just <laughs> march along? Somebody tell me. I support this. Yeah, I support this as okay. well. Wow. Me too. Straw poll, is there anybody who doesn't support Bill to approve this? Okay, Bill, you've got your marching orders. Mm -hmm. If you right. need backup, make sure you call Ken. Thank you very much, guys. Okay, so number five, uh, waiting study. So if you like to kill trees, you can go online 
And here's a report, people waiting factors report. It's really big, but I can't do the computer. I have to see it in paper and read it in paper. So it's here if anybody would like to look at it. There's like a five or 11 page executive summary. And it's very good. And basically it's something that in our area, um, Ann Manwer was a representative for Wilmington for a while. She had been trying to get something similar to this done. And then Laura, um, when she became a representative, she's really fought for this. And, and even before, um, we used to, the town of Dover used to support a, or have a, a lobbyist and a person working with us to try to get some changes to education finance. And this was, you know, we had a, some other studies done um, that we turned over to the legislature. But this is the first time the state actually had a report done in, in if anybody didn't get a chance to read it, I'm going to put Laura on the spot and just ask her to give us a brief summary of it. <clears throat> and the reason I asked to have this meeting, and I did check with the officers, was I would, um, one of the thoughts is if, if everybody's in agreement, I'd like for Wyndham Central to um, write a letter to the legislators supporting that they enact this study or at least you know, review it and allow us to testify, any of us that want to testify. Um, just so you all know too though it doesn't it's not great for every school it doesn't every town does does not win in this but I think it's part of it. <laughs> yes, yes, do. but I think it I think it's a fairly um, good study so you uh, I just want to flesh out your request I completely agree um, rich uh, as I understand that Laura has actually sponsored I think four pieces of legislation around this and and so I think if we do write a letter we should write it in support of of not only the concept but these particular pieces of legislation and I want to point out too that um, as your regional representative to the school board association uh, we have a meeting on Wednesday and uh, if that could possibly be done or at least the action taken around that by Wednesday I'd like to present it there as well so okay. So yes. So let's keep that in, in mind while we'll let Laura present right, the study. Right. If there's any questions, if there's anybody you know in the audience that has some questions, <coughs> Laura's pretty well versed in it, and then um, we'll have some discussion and decide what we want to do. So I do want to just thanks, Rich. Um, I don't know how much time you want me to take, and I will try to be brief. We're going to be out of here at seven. seven. Perfect, because yeah. dinner is looking good Mine once too. we get to. <laughs> um, <coughs> I do want to note. Uh, that uh, Kelly Paella, who's here, Representative Kelly Paella, Carolyn Partridge. Oh, Kel well, yeah. we've saved your oh, seat up here, yeah. Kelly. Sorry, Kelly. We're going to put you on the spot. <laughs> uh, <coughs> and John Gannon have sponsored that legislation, and I want to be very clear to note that we have been talking with and keeping uh, Emily apprised of all of this, and she is very much aware and working with us. And Carolyn us. also is. Is that a fair characterization? It is. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Carolyn, Carolyn, if I didn't say Carolyn. Yeah. It is. Carolyn oh, she did. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Does everybody understand? Does everybody understand the, the weights and why it matters? Does everybody in the audience understand the weights? And why it matters? So. <coughs> But the people watching might not. Yeah. Okay, so um, very briefly, uh, with that, let's see if it's briefly. Very briefly with Act 60 um, and <coughs> the requirement, you know, to fix our education system so that we were providing substantially equitable opportunity for all of our kids. The legislature um, put in place a mechanism, statewide education property tax, as everyone knows, and uh, the equity. Um, the measure of equity, uh, and feel free anybody to jump in and correct me if I if I uh, go astray. No. <laughs> was really per pupil spending, and you know we figure out per pupil spending by total number. You know how much are we spending? How many kids do we have? Uh, we acknowledged, or prior to Act 60, there was an acknowledgement that some students cost more to educate, and so they were weighted differently. Um, they were weighted. Um, as more than one, and that were that was high school. Uh, there was some Here. special ed and some ESL. Okay. <coughs> yes. Explain the weight. It's not dollars. It's weight is number of students. So um, you know, if we have a classroom of ten, 
Um, you know, if it's 10 middle school students with no special needs, they're all uh, English language learners, no one is in poverty, um, you know, that's 10 kids. Um, you know, when we start talking about kids with special needs or English language needs, or <clears throat> as this study um, has indicated, um, kids in areas with low population density or high poverty, um, you start saying that's, that child's gonna cost more to educate and therefore we need to count that child as more. The weights are important because the construct that we have, well, it just, um, that's, how we, that's how we deal with students that cost more to educate. Can I just add one piece Please about that? The, the one time that I remember that a weight changed, the, the waiting um, schedule was all, was in place for a really long time, but we did, there was a change made in 20, 20 for high school. I can't remember the date for high school, and it went from 1.25 down to 1.13. And at the time, and I'm pretty sure Laura remembers it as well, but I was sitting on the Leland and Gray High School board, and I felt pretty concerned about the loss of having them sure. You know, so I asked why, over and over and over, how did you come to uh, 1.13? And I, at the time, never um, got an answer. I'm sure of that. There door. was no. I shouldn't. Well, I didn't. I didn't actually say that, but it felt like that. There was no real metric that they based it on. It felt like it was a means of dealing. Back of envelopes. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so <clears throat> we have been pushing, as Rich said, for years, saying that there, it just does not. And we've had these discussions here. It does not cost the same to educate. Um, Student, every student everywhere and you know the very basic example that we give or that I will give to other legislators um, you know if you have a classroom of 10 and you have a classroom of 20 and all things are equal with those students and we're aiming for per pupil spending legislatively we're trying to get everybody aimed uh, in the same direction uh, and it's say ten thousand dollars per pupil this classroom of 10 students has a hundred thousand dollars this classroom of 20 students has two hundred thousand dollars if they have good school boards in each one of those classrooms, which I'm certain that they do, um, they are spending those dollars to purchase as much high quality education as they can for their kids. And what it means is over here, they're buying more opportunity for their kids. And when every, all the residents get cranky and say, you're spending too much, we push down on per pupil spending, the penalties, the excess spending penalties, and we say, all right, guys, we really only want you spending $9,000 per pupil. I have $90,000 here and $180,000 here, and that's starting to hurt for these kids. And, you know, maybe their school board's saying we have to spend more, and now you're seeing tax impacts there. Or maybe your school board's not saying spend more. You know, one way or the other, you've got taxpayers or kids getting hurt over here. We're still probably pretty good with 180000 over here with these 20 kids. <clears throat> so they're seeing a tax benefit and more opportunity. Uh, this waiting study, you know, uh, we've been pushing for years and years and years. Um, and actually, Oliver um, Olson, um, preceding <laughs> Kelly, um, you know, I can remember him speaking on the floor and talking about the differences in uh, opportunities amongst high schools and uh, alluding to this. This study, um, I think the uh, Education Committee, and I think you probably were still on it at that time, um, we were fortunate enough that um, the chair really wanted to push on the poverty weight. Really wanted to, Dave Sharp at the time, um, push on that. And we took a look at all of the weights, with the exception of pre-K. Um, and this study, um, I'm so ecstatic, uh, you know, with the quality of work that was done, the breadth of information that they considered across the nation, and, uh, you know, they've come back with recommendations basically saying the weights that we have, they're historical artifacts, um, there's no basis for them. Um, and, you know, I can see you laughing, but, and, and it's, it's sort of funny, but actually, it, it makes me really angry because not a lot of people, but some people have known this for a very long time. And a lot of kids got hurt. And taxpayers have been hurt as well. 
I'm, I'm sorry, Al. I'm not meaning, to, you know, but it's, I'm telling you, I'm really feeling the, you know, injustice of this a lot. <clears throat> so there are. Um, and, and on that, too, you know, one of the things is it's been going on for 20 years. Yes. So when Leland and Gray started saying, okay, we can't, we, you know, we either going to give our kids more opportunity or we're going to fix the building, we gave kids opportunity. Every school's done that. But that 20 years of, of not doing it, you know, a project that 20 years ago would have cost, you know, a million dollars is now going to cost you $10 million. Um, and it's, it doesn't get better just because, you know, we can't close our eyes to it. And that's one of the problems. It just keeps compounding itself, too. And that was one of the reasons why I really wanted to do something because I thought it would be important for this legislative session to do something because we can't just kick the can down the road again. You know, it's been getting kicked for a long time, and it's time to really, you know, <coughs> bite the bullet and, and do what's right and do what's proper. I think it's important to use the term that they used in the study. There was no empirical evidence no to back up the weights <coughs> as they were in place, um, to, as they are in place today. They searched for it, couldn't find it, no empirical evidence. Um, so there are weights. There are now recommended weights um, looking at um, adding a uh, new weight for, um, and I can't get to the chart, um, but presumably you all have it, um, a middle school weight, uh, adding a virality and a small, contemplating a small school, um, and a very dramatic, as I'm sure you've all seen, um, increased weight for poverty, um, EL and ELL. Did I hit them all? Okay. Thank you. So, I want to have that same one. Thanks. Did you mention rurality? Yes. 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 That's the first. Yes. Big one. Yeah. Oh, I have that. Thank you. Um, <coughs> So the weights have been moved forward. Um, some things that are that are curious and interesting to you know. Uh, so this is the second year of a legislative biennium, uh, and that means uh, we're and there were there was a lot of legislation that was introduced last year um, that probably will never be acted on. We put in place um, the legislature put in place some mechanisms to you know really try and manage that this year, meaning that you had to introduce. Um, Full long long form bills. When was it, Emily? January 15th. No, before then. December. Overdrafting. Oh, for drafting. For drafting. It was December. Yeah. yeah, December. Um, so uh, you can introduce a short form bill at any time. A short form bill, and that's what we have introduced. Are just it's a it's a notion, um, and the committees can then decide if they want to take that up and flesh it out. Um, or add that language in, but it's a means of putting forward ideas. Um, the ideas that we have put forward are uh, to implement the weights this year, uh, to not make any changes to the education financing system until the General Assembly has uh, fully considered and acted upon the weight of study. It doesn't mean they have to put in what's there, but they have to take testimony, consider it, um, do all of that. Uh, and then the other two are, uh, one is to do a look back to uh, 2000, from 2000 to 2018. Um, 2000 is the fourth year of implementation for Act 60. Act 60 rolled in over four years. Uh, so looking at 2000 to 2018 <coughs> and asking uh, JFO or AOE to quantify the cost and lost student opportunity in those 18 years. And then um, the other is asking AOE or JFO to look back from 2000 to 2018 and to quantify um, the amount of um, excess dollars that some districts accessed and um, the penalty that uh, other districts have been in because the system has been unfair. Um, the reality on the ground, um, there's a couple of pieces. Um, I've been told that education finance has moved back to ways and means for a number of years. It was in uh, the education committee in the House. Um, I've also been told that this bill needs to start in the Senate. Um, Senator Baruth has um, told me he intends 
to try and act on it, um, you know, you have to look at how many senators want to move this bill forward. Uh, uh, the Secretary of Education testified in the House Ways and Means um, that this had been done. It points to a pretty significant uh, inequity, uh, an existing inequity uh, for our students, and <coughs> that the current weights um, are outdated and they do not represent current educational circumstances or cost. In particular, the variation between the poverty weight as compared to the poverty weight determined through the, the analysis of the report <coughs> suggests immediate action by the General Assembly is necessary to address a significant equity concern in the current education funding system. I was standing behind him while he said this to the Ways and Means Committee, um, and he said he could see no justification for waiting. A I T I A G. Delay. Delay. None, nonetheless, um, and so the other piece of information is the Joint Fiscal Office. Um, 2018 was before all of the um, Accord 6 mergers were in place, and so uh, JFO, Joint Fiscal Office, has been running um, the numbers for 2020. And I think uh, it's their belief that, I don't know if those have, those have not, have not been. been. My okay. So uh, I believe those, I'm not sure, but I believe those are posted on the Joint Fiscal Office website. Uh, it's, and I haven't had a chance to review their memo that goes with that. I think it's their understanding that there are more winners and less losers. Uh, losers being people whose taxes will go up if they continue spending the way that they are. Good. So, I think that's it. Um, the one thing that I would say, and I said it very clearly, um, we had a meeting um, in Dover um, pretty quickly to let folks know um, this had happened, this is <coughs> happening. Um, we are pushing really hard for action this year. It's my intention to push at every single opportunity <coughs> to bring this forward um, and try and get some relief. It's my expectation. They're trying right now to roll it in over several years which makes sense. You know, if my town was looking at a 60 cent tax increase, well, I'd be, is. yeah, right. I'd be looking for rolling it in for the increases, but not for the relief. And so, you know, we're looking for the people who are, you know, not able to access the funding that is necessary for their kids. So looking at um, ways to deal with that. If the legislature, it is my opinion, if the legislature does not act on it this year, school districts who um, who are not properly weighted and who are not able to access um, appropriate funding um, without tax penalty, I believe you should get an attorney. So, and you should fight that. I think I think it's unconstitutional what's going on. Okay, so are there any comments from the board first? No, questions, comments from the board, and then we'll take questions, comments from the public. Uh, I was going to make a motion. Uh, is it inappropriate to have something on the floor before we start this discussion? Uh, would you rather do that or wait till we're done with the discussion? What do you guys think? Do we want to discuss it or do we want to have a motion to discuss? Have a motion to discuss. Okay. Uh, I, I, think, I mean, basically, the motion is just that we're going to support these things here. So I don't think the motion takes us outside of any of the realm of the okay. discussion of the topic. But here, here's my motion, um, subject to uh, approval by everybody. Uh, I, I make a motion that the WCSU board supports legislation being put forward by Representative Sibelia, Payala, Gannon, et al. I'm not sure who all of the sponsors are. Um, in the Vermont House relative to the recently finished pupil weighting factor report that would that would implement the recommendations of this report for schools in Vermont and asks the chair to write a letter to the legislature to this effect. Okay, so we have a motion. I'll second Don't, it. Okay, Ken seconds it. Don't worry about trying to type it. Um, he can he'll, he'll give it to you. Right. Okay. Did everybody hear the motion okay? Mm -hmm. okay. So is there discussion? You want to second it? No, we did. Ken, 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 Ken seconded. 
Um, mm -hmm. it, I just, so a couple of things I took away from Laura's comments that I would want to include in the letter and just make sure that this is good with you folks is that we want them to implement the, the weights this year. No change um, in school financing until the full legislature gets to review the study and discuss it. Um, that they look back between 2000 and 2018 for the um, lost opportunity, student opportunities, and qualify excess, um, excessive dollars spent and penalty dollars re um, received or spent by uh, districts that were in the penalty. And that we want to make sure we address who. We want to address the Senate Ed. We want to address our senators. Yes our representatives, House Ed, House Ways and Means, yep, and then Senate, Senate Finance, House Ways and Means, right? yes. Senate Finance, uh, the Senate Pro Tem, Senate Pro Tem and Speaker, speaker. Uh, and uh, I would also speaker. send it to, Hang on. well do we also want to talk about no justification for waiting? And relief is immediate. No justification for oh waiting. Delaying. And then uh, joint. So we want to do the Senate pro tem and the Speaker of the House. And was there? I would recommend AOE. And I think you should discuss whether or not you want to send it to the School Boards Association. Yeah and the Superintendents Association. I was going to say, um, probably the special educators. That's a pretty big piece Huge. of this. Mm -hmm. um, and the Principals Association to keep them informed as well. Yeah. Do the bees. Okay. <clears throat> Can I just ask a question? What's yes. The timeline? What's the timeline on this? Like, that you would expect? Can you repeat it? Sort of? What is the timeline for this? Not your fault. So a couple of things to to know, which is the legislature can move on a dime if they are so inclined. Mm -hmm. This is very impactful, and so it's not going to move on a dime. Um, the Senate needs to move something out before crossover, which, Emily, do you know when crossover is? Uh, yeah. But I pulled my calendar because we just decided on it. Did we actually vote on it? I don't know. We did um, It's, it's mid-March. It's right it's after town meeting. meeting. So they would have to make a move on this by that point? Theoretically. So the Rules Committee, there's a Rules Committee in the Senate, there's a Rules Committee in the House. The Senate, at this point, they'll need to do something around rules if they were to put in a bill, or they'll need to put it in a bill that's moving because their deadline for committee bills has passed. The 13th. 13th. Okay. The 13th. I, tentatively, there is a um, public yeah, so information the session on March 11th oh. up at the State House as well, tentatively. Um, I was just going to say for, for um, financial crossover is a week later, but it has to have to be impacting things that were in the budget or revenue. Yeah. Well, we usually got an extra week. So um, I, things that I think are really important right now, uh, your senators need to hear from you respectfully. They need to feel your sense of urgency so that they can convey that to their, to the Senate. Um, we all need to hear from you. You know, please copy all of us if you're reaching out. And we need more voices. Mm -hmm. So the Northeast Kingdom and this district have already kind of been pinpointed as, oh, they're up in arms. So you know, that's where the SBA and all the others could be really helpful. So, so yes, we will definitely, it'll have to be urgent. I, I want to do it from Wyndham Central because I think it represents a, a broad group, but that does not <coughs> keep any individual board member especially those of you that have students in, or uh, you know, family members in one of the school systems to also write letters. Um, and it doesn't keep other boards from writing letters to, you know, individual like the Marlboro board. But the more letters we got, I just, it, it seems like if we could say, hey, we're representing the whole district, the whole area, that it would carry a little more weight, so. Sorry, I have one more thing, Richard, which okay. is I would ask 
if you are able to, I would ask to testify. No, I'm going to put it in And the ask for your students mm -hmm. to be able to testify mm -hmm. or your parents or your taxpayers mm -hmm. to be able to testify if you're able to do it. So I have a, a procedural question here. I think we're insanely lucky to be represented by so many members of the legislature here at these, these school uh, meetings. Uh, of the four pieces of legislation, two are moving forward and two are looking back, it sounds to me. Uh, do you feel that the second two jeopardize the first two in any way? Because I, I do wonder that. Do, um, are there people going to say, uh, I would have supported them if we were just going forward, but because you're sort of asking to look back at who was harmed in the past, I don't know. You so 910 and 912 are the two that are looking forward. Mm -hmm. uh, 911 and 913 are an expression of hoping to get people's attention to the gravity and size of the injustice that's being done. I don't actually hold out a lot of hope that government resources will be expended to quantify that. Yeah. Speaking of the gravity and the size, this is kind of to Bill. Uh, so, uh, Lori, last time indicated that the, the red board, or our budget, we would see approximately 60 equalized pupils. That's huge. Mm -hmm. That's humongous. That's yeah. And it would drop us below the threshold. I mean, that's. No, right now, it would not. No. I'm sorry. She said it wouldn't. No. Really? It wouldn't. Yeah, you're 923,000 like in the threshold. This would only be about 600,000 plus. It's so still enacted based so on the FY18 mm -hmm. modeling yeah. that you have in front of you, but not the FY20 modeling, right. which is being done in the joint fiscal office. Okay, so 600,000 would represent about 12 cents on the. Oh, it's a big deal. Yeah. It's a big deal. So, mm -hmm. so if you, you know, Bill passed out on the back of the agenda sheets, and I'm just picking one, Appendix E, Simulation 8-2. Brookline, unfortunately, sees a four cent increase. Um, but Jamaica sees a 39 cent decrease. New Fane sees a 22 cent decrease. 29 cent decrease for towns in Leland Gray, 11 cents. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. This, is, on this was attached to the... So there, there's several of them. Yeah. I want to make sure, because there are a number of different simulations here. Right, that's why I said There are just, some variables yeah. that the legislature needs to discuss. Right, but from looking at these, close, the difference is... You know, two to four cents. So that's yeah. why I'm taking. Yeah. Right. I'm taking the, the the one that shows the biggest variances yeah. that I can see, and then you know, Leland Gray's eleven cents. Dover goes up four. Wardsboro goes down seventeen. Marlboro goes down twenty one. Wyndham goes down twenty nine. And Stratton is the big winner. They go up sixty four. I have another thing to say. Yes. I'm sorry, it's actually kind of important. So okay, go of, and then we got to take questions from the audience. One of the pushbacks on this um, that I've heard from analysts and uh, ledge counsel, um, and they say it in the study themselves, is that there's no way of knowing what um, a town, like I will say a town not in the supervisor union, but they <coughs> represent, what a town like Reedsboro would do with a 40 cent decrease in their tax rate in 2018. But they've purchased more opportunity for their students or they have pocketed the tax savings and in fact when i testified in house education there was a lot of concern expressed about that and whether or not i would support mandating that they use that to purchase opportunity for their students i want you all to listen very carefully to me <coughs> that is happening right now on the other end mm -hmm. where people are over accessing resources based on incorrect weights and schools that are over accessing resources are making choices to either purchase more opportunity for their students or save their taxes and so if you are confronted with that I hope you will push back on it it's also a justification for dealing with this issue immediately but it also allows the public to make that decision when they go to, to school district meeting. They can say, hey, look, you know, we're willing to accept a two cent increase or a 10 percent or increase in the or whatever that number is. And they get to I mean, that was part of all about Act 60 
the state wasn't going to just give you a pot of money. You've <coughs> got to. Yeah, but that make is decisions. Act 60, and you're not you're not creating that situation by enacting these weights. That situation already exists. That's right. Hmm. Can I, can I I'll follow up on that. Um, and, I, and I know I'm probably just stating the obvious, but I want to make sure everybody understands. This is about tax rates. Mm -hmm. This is about tax rates and, and what, what you can buy. You feel that your um, voters in your district can support um, based on tax rates. So if, if um, for example, at the West River District, we're over um, the excess spending threshold. If we, um, and, and we're still, we're, the reason we're over is because we have made decisions um, about the spending plan that we have here, providing the education that we believe um, supports those values that we have behind us. Uh, and and our tax rate is, our, our tax rates are higher because of our decisions around that spending. If there's a change in weighting, that Laura's been describing, we will be able to see either a reduction, significant reduction in our tax rates in our communities, most of them, they're all different, um, or we can say, hey, this is an opportunity for us to maybe both lower our tax rate and to put the money into something that we've been deferring for quite some time. Um, and I think you can duplicate that in every single district around the state in one way or another, either going up or going down. Um, but I think it's just really important that people understand decisions are still made locally on your spending plans based on your values and what you think the voters in your school district will support for that education. And I just think it's really important we keep that in mind. And so decisions are still made locally around that. I have one more question. Yeah. You know, so, talk to, to have him. Ken, Ken's very loud. I can hear. Joe. Joe. Ken, Joe. Ken's on that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ken is loud, but she'll, Joe's she'll loud enough. Just yeah. tell her. She's got so, laryngitis. Awful. I know. She's from Stratton. Yeah, she's from Stratton. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so before I totally freak out, yeah, um, we have been told to repeat that we need yeah. work for us as yeah. well. Yeah. And well I'm, no, I mean, based on these numbers. Well, no, but what I'm wondering. Because of the years that we're living, we had an incredible anomaly happen yeah. right around this right. time. It, so maybe this isn't necessarily representative of what would happen overall for Stratton. Is that an So there are FY20 numbers. I think yeah. they need to be looked at. Um, this is not what you will see. There's, Of course, there will be an immediate impact. There is the opportunity to see some spending maybe come down. Because what is the effect of what is happening here are large wealthy towns without a lot of poverty have been seriously overspending and that is actually where most of our spending is in the state right but stratton's current situation is compounded by two years of unanticipated right. students and being above significantly above the excess spending threshold right, right. and so that's why that number looks so scary not However, office. since you're not operating district, I think your numbers yeah. function somewhat differently than right. an operating school district. I, I like my hair. I don't want to get scalped. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not bad. It happened to but a I, couple of us. <laughs> but I think if this is going to be addressed, you, you have to look at right. You have to look at what this does to non-operating non districts and and um, see how they function within the. The funding formula. That maybe not have as been as discussed. Right. And um, well, there are some non-operators who go down as well. So I mean, yes, we have to. That's true. Yeah. Right. So and Wind Hall goes up, not quite as significantly, but also significantly. So you know, and I know you two towns have had kind of mirroring yeah. um, challenges <laughs> over the last couple of years. So. Yeah. So uh, we haven't given the audience a chance. So if any, oh, I'll go ahead and uh, then we'll get I just had one question. Is this going to do anything with the uh, the hold harmless? Because we can't go or, like even if this was implemented today, we wouldn't see these declines because we're held to the can't go down by up or down by more than five percent because we merged. Right? So the legislature can turn things around on a dime, which is great. It's terrifying. So, so would this be out? Could, would your legislation be outside of that, like so that it could go down, like it went down twenty nine cents? It, it could happen. 
and not be limited be by addressed. how much it could fall? Uh, I think we have to flesh all of that out by taking the bills up and working on them, as well as the, you know, different, you know, you have all these different scenarios because there are some, you know, options to discuss. So when Act 60 was phased in, <clears throat> what they did was they, they said schools that are going up are only going to increase so much percentage. Like in Dover, we, we would go up to this certain tax rate that we were below. And in the following year, we would go up to this other tax rate, whether you spent that much or not. Mm -hmm. And other schools were getting some of that money, but it didn't fully implement for three years or, or four years. And I think that was one of the things Laura was talking about, is they're, they're looking at, you know, so maybe not the schools that are coming down that would, would see an increase that would be phased in. But, um, you know, one of the things they're arguing for is those schools that really need help. You know, you can, we can't wait another four years to phase it in. It needs, we've waited 20 years. Let's, let's right. move. I, I was talking about the Act 46, right? Where yes, they, you you know, are. they can't right. go up or down by. Right. Yeah. Which phases out eventually. Can I, right. Before you go to them, can I just ask? Yes, but we're going to run out of time. I, I know, but I'm just, Laura, am I right that all four of those bills went to the House Ed? Even though House I, Education so is I not dealing just with finance. So I want to clarify that House Education was given, um, in the four years that I sat on it, was given the duty of looking at finance as well. That was removed from them this past, th during this biennium. Um, but I would say that it never, uh, House Ed never operated in even those four years dealing with um, ed finance, it was always in conjunction with ways and means. So these did get sent to house ed, and that's a decision that gets made, but I'm not sure what action is going to be taken in house ed. And here's my second piece to this. You may have an update for me or for all of us, but the Senate Ed Committee has had more conversations around this, I think, than, than the house. They've taken more steps and more showing more action. Would you say that that's a fair assessment? I would say that that's a fair assessment. But um, you don't see any path yet. I, so last weekend, <coughs> I sent a letter to, um, we sent a letter to the speaker in the pro tem. Mm -hmm. Saying it needs to happen this year. Um, saw this pro tem last Tuesday, and he said, uh, we're running the FY20 numbers. Okay. And then we're going to start talking about okay. it. you know that's, what's that's you know seeing if there's the will to move, and you can check back in next week, which yeah. is tomorrow, which I will be doing. So it's, it could start in the House or the Senate, which is important that this, and, the motion gets sent to all both. But everybody's mm -hmm. saying it's going to start in the Senate. It is. It has to go to both. Yeah, I, I just think it's really important. Okay, go ahead. Um, I have a couple comments. Patty Dixon from Jamaica. Um, First of all, everybody should write to all of these people, and you can find all their information online. I wrote a letter and sent it to Ways and Means, Finance, Senate, House, everybody. And everybody should, the more, and I got responses from some people too. And my <coughs> understanding of, um, I think it was from the executive <coughs> summary, was the idea is more a redistribution <coughs> of the original money that's always been there or always been sent, but it's meant to redistribute it more fairly to the places that really need it. Not necessarily to save money on your taxes, not necessarily the, the purpose is to, to make things right. That we have all just <coughs> agonized about every budget season. It's just I'm sorry. Don't get me going. No, I know. Okay. It's it's divided boards. It's divided communities. It's just been horrific, and everything we try doesn't work. It just very Unjust. long time coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Did you want to put it on that? Do you want me to mention yeah. that? So I, I just think it's it's also really important to understand that this isn't actual dollars that come into our district. This is buying capacity through yes. tax rates. So when you say sending money, that's actually not yeah. true. It's yeah. not, and, and I'm not trying to correct you. I'm so just trying to say people yeah. need to make sure they can totally understand what this that's means. Right. It's not actual dollars being right. sent to your district from the state. It's buying capacity through tax rates. It's reducing or raising. It allows tax us rates. to spend more. Yeah. Right. Without, without impacting our tax impacting our tax rates. Right. Yeah. Just one minute. Yeah. Thank you. 
Is any other comments from the, go ahead. Um, I guess Gerald Julian's he say from Newfane. And um, so I think when you were listing the um, items that influence the, the, um, the weighting, you mentioned rurality. So because one of the issues that I always feel like um, down here we should get some kind of a special consideration when we go over our threshold and then we're penalized because we've gone over our threshold, but we're the second largest geographic education district in the whole state. And so yes, we have, even though we have a small population, we're traveling many, many miles. Um, and so therefore, there should be some kind of consideration for that, that we still, you know, just because our student population lives all over the place and we have to get them to school. So I was looking at the figures here, it's almost $400,000 for transportation. That's quite a bit and influences how much of that, a percentage of that then is figured into the equalized pupil spending, then we're going over our budget, then we're getting penalized. So how does that fit into there? That can we get some kind of relief? So that's, that is part of, part of the argument that we made <coughs> for having the waiting study done. And there is a weight in here that well, recognizes that rurality. So we have to wait for these decisions to be made. I mean, just in the last few weeks when we've had our meetings here and having to cut and cut, and we can't cut anymore. So and yet our miles aren't changing. <laughs> we still are, are educating the same number of students who live in the same spread out district. I, I will just say to you, I would encourage you, you cannot wait for people to understand your pain or to do the right thing. We need you to help. We need you to be articulate about what you are facing, and we need you to work with your boards <coughs> to be articulate about what you are facing and to communicate that. We, so need, we need everybody. Any, any other comments from the public? Drew? No. Anything? As a board member? No, I support I, I support the action that was called in motion and I second the call to put in there that we will testify, parents will testify, board members. We will all march up and testify. Well I'm drive is a long march. <laughs> Go ahead now. Go on drive. And then Ken. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pardon Ken. That's not right. Everybody don't well, speak it no, up. No, Al's Al wants to speak. Uh, then I'll, I'll get so you and then we'll vote. Just following on to what you said. So is it fair to say that the excess spending threshold is, is really kind of a compounding of the inequity? Uh, I mean, it's loan sharks don't pay, yes. don't charge you 100% on, uh, on the penalties. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. It continues to be pushed back on the excess spending threshold from all yes. angles. Yeah. Right, so I'm just thinking, if we were not able to push this legislation through, at the very least, if we can knock that out, so that was a suggestion planning. that I made to the education committee who were there. You know, like I understand that you may need to roll this in, you know, because of, you know, the shock factor for places that are looking at tax increases. And, you know, I encourage them to look for then one time dollars or something to help <coughs> us or or look at the um, excess spending and you know, we've been hearing some good ideas about, you know, ways to do that. Yeah, because you're not taking it away from anybody else at that point. Uh, yeah. No, but your excess money is going to well, other places. One of, one of the other um, notions is, that is being put out there that at this point I've heard nothing to, to help me not be alarmed by this is the notion of doing categorical grants instead of adjusting the weights. And so, if you don't adjust the weights, you keep the inequity in place, mm -hmm. and you put some, you know, temporary, you know, will right. into categorical right. grants, which is simply going to increase education spending, mm -hmm. which I'm sure none of the, none of our voters or your constituents will, you know, weigh in with you. It's about. also not adjusting as much wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. Ken. But it allows what? you not to have to make difficult decisions. I was going to call the question. Okay. Well, we don't have to call a question. You guys ready to vote? Mm -hmm. That's one less vote. So I have a question. Um, I, I'd be willing to revise this if my second will go along with it. Instead of um, saying uh, this clause relative to the recently finished pupil waiting factor report, 
instead of that, mention House 910, 911, 912, and 913. Or maybe no, leave them both in. No, just, but that's okay because you you said it. Yeah. So it's going to be in there. I just I, I don't think we have to. I'll, I can reference it in the letter without you having to okay. change your motion. Okay. Unless you feel that the motion would be more I, I more think effective. You know, I, I, okay. I, All right. So yeah, I just I'll make sure I put it in, and you know what, I'll shoot it over to you. And you can look at it. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Do you want me to reread as? Uh, uh, I don't think so. Do we need to reread the motion, or is everybody okay? Okay, so if you're ready to vote, all those in favor of the motion from our gentleman on the left, signify so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? I oh. feel like I might need to oppose just because this is glaringly <laughs> awful. Um, okay. But I don't know if I should do that. Well, it's up to you. You need to okay. make a decision. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. So I think I have to oppose. Okay, so we have one opposing. So the motion carries mm -hmm. almost unanimously. Um, thank you, folks. Thank you for the audience. Thank you for your input. We really appreciate it. It's really nice to see you here. And then, if you have any questions, send them an email. She'll tell you who to write to. She'll give you everything you need. So hang on. We're not done yet, folks. We're not done yet. Okay. I have. A, I, we have a contractual. I mean, yes. Yeah, you can leave. So we have a. a we have a. a, a Fairly quick contractual issue, and, the, and we will make a decision after the, the executive session. So I need to have a motion for an executive session for contractual issues. So moved. Okay, so Joe moved it. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. We have a second. Mike. It's not about this. No, no. Oh, it's just coming. Yeah, my No, Okay, so we have a motion to second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. And I will make a motion um, to instruct the chair to sign the contracts for Christopher, Christopher Medina, Director of Operations. For the amount. The amount. Oh, the amount. Okay. It, in the amount of seventy-seven thousand three hundred and forty-four dollars for fiscal year twenty twenty-one. Oh, say that slowly. We'll give it to you in a minute. Okay. okay. No, Do you like we'll it slower, Peter? In a minute. We'll hand them to him. Okay. Great. <coughs> Director of Finance Lori Garland, in the amount of one hundred four thousand three hundred and ten dollars for the year twenty twenty through twenty twenty-one. For Director of Curriculum Instruction and Assessment. Jen McCusick in the amount of $106,339 for the year 2020 through 2021. And finally, for the Director of Special Education, Stephanie Beatty Hancock, in the amount of $101,274 for one year 2020 through 2021. One hundred and two, two seventy. Yeah, we'll we'll give you one hundred and one thousand two hundred and seventy four dollars. Okay, second. Okay, Dan seconds it. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? And any abstentions? Okay, we are good to go. So our next meeting is April first. Good luck at your school district meetings, folks. Um, and I'll entertain a motion to leave. You're not done. No. Don't move. Motion to adjourn. Okay, you got a motion to adjourn by Mike and somebody else is so moved. Yeah. Leanne set, second it, and all those are in favor say let's go. Aye. 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 Aye.